This is a Leslie model S5T locomotive horn. The S stands for the round type diaphragm chambers, 5 for the number of bells or chimes, and T for the chord that it sounds. This horn was removed from Southern Short Haul Railroad locomotive C510 a few days ago. If you've been trackside lately, you may have noticed that some of these horns are not sounding the way they should. They're still quite loud, so it's not an operational issue, but because some of the diaphragm chambers are blocked and the corresponding bells are not sounding, the horns are lacking that deep tone that Leslie's are famous for. The problem is that to remove these diaphragm chambers takes a lot of time and effort and mucking around. It's a sort of job that is usually too time consuming to be allocated to a guy in the workshop. I've volunteered to have a go at fixing some of these horns. So what we did last week was to take the horn off C510, fit one of my restored S5Ts temporarily, and I'm going to have a go at taking this one apart. You don't necessarily have to take a power chamber off the manifold to inspect it and test it, but it's quite difficult to conclusively determine whether it's really working. So the best thing to do is to actually get it off and put it on a single chime manifold like this one. The first issue in getting one of these off the manifold is removing the three bolts. These have already been taken out and you can see there's a lot of corrosion, they're quite rusty, they have to be left soaking in penetrating oil for a while and you have to remove them very carefully. If you put too much force on them before they're loose you'll crack the manifold. Once you've got the three bolts out you need to gently tap the power chamber so that it slides off the base of the bell. The next step is to undo the six bolts that hold the back cap on and using a wide blade screwdriver gently prise the back cap off the chamber. Too much force in this process and you'll crack the chamber and that'll make it useless. Let's pull this one apart and see what's inside. Okay, this is what's on the inside of an S-type diaphragm chamber. The first thing to check is that it's clean and not blocked. In some of the ones I've opened up in the last few days, I've found the remains of insects, lots of soot and dust, and uh, that sort of forms into a cement that stops the discs from vibrating. Once you've made sure it's clean, the next thing to check is the ring around this nozzle have to make sure it's smooth and not too badly worn down. Then on the back cap you remove this screw and a ring will pop out. If a groove's been worn into it you can just swap it over. Then you have the disc itself that's sitting in the back cap. You can see it's already got a groove in there from the ring. That'll pop out. You need to check that the seat that it fits into is uh, smooth and hasn't been worn down. This rivet that holds the diffuser plate in can become loose and that allows the diffuser plate to rattle around and the diaphragm won't work properly. Once all this is clean and you've either flipped the ring and the disc over or put new ones in, you reassemble it and then test it. So we'll do that next. Okay, I've got the power chamber reassembled, got the bolts tensioned just right. Going to put about 60 pounds of air into it and it should give a nice solid note. Each bell has a narrow tube that runs from the flange of the bell where it's bolted onto the manifold, through the air passage in the manifold and into the disc chamber. The tube has a tiny orifice that allows air from the manifold into the tube and up into the chamber. If that orifice is blocked, obviously the chamber won't sound. So the next step is to gently tap the bell out of the manifold and check that the hole is clear. You can see in this shot how the disc chamber fits onto the base of the bell and the small tube runs up into the chamber. You obviously need to imagine that the manifold is running through here. The bolts then slide through the bell, through the manifold, and get screwed up into the power chamber. Now these are steel bolts, 
aluminium power chamber. So another drama can be that earlier in the disassembly process, the bolts have been seized inside these power chambers and they won't come out. Interesting thing about these orifice holes is that most bells have the same size hole in each tube. That means the same amount of air gets through to every power chamber. But what you can do is change the size of the holes depending on which bell you want to make louder. If that's been done to a horn, it's called a variable orifice horn. As I said at the start, this horn is off locomotive C510, and I was interested to find out if it was one of the original horns fitted to the locomotive when it was new. There are two ways we can work this out. These horns have a number stamped in the rim of the base of the horn. This number is the year in which the horn was assembled. You can make out on this horn a number 77. That means it was assembled in 1977, making it a little bit too new to be one of the original horns on the C-Class. Another way we can check is to have a look at the serial number of the horn. I've stripped the paint off the tag, checked the serial number, and it is not one of the horns that was originally fitted to the C-Class locomotives. My guess is that this was a replacement horn fitted at some stage during an overhaul to the locomotive. From 1979 onwards, Leslie changed the style of the diaphragm chamber that they used on their horns. These new diaphragm chambers were designated RS chambers. They're quite different from the old S chambers, as you can see. Large spike out the back. A donut ring goes inside there. It's made out of rubber. But the good thing is that these will fit straight on the original horns. So they're often used as replacements. Internally they're quite different too. They only have one disc inside instead of two. It has a rubber or silicon mould around it. The real advantage of these is they are far less prone to being clogged and wearing out. Locomotives C504, C505 and C507 have horns fitted with these types of diaphragm chambers. They're designated RS5T horns. C506 and C509 also have S5T horns fitted and those horns too are not sounding correctly. So the plan was to swap this horn, which is now working reasonably well, with the horn on one of those locos, fix that horn, and swap it again with the remaining loco, ending up with three fully functioning S5T horns. Problem though is that two of the power chambers on this horn are pretty badly worn. They're sounding reasonable at the moment, but they're probably going to keep wearing. So SSR have decided to acquire a set of new RS power chambers or diaphragm chambers, fit them to this horn. That will give us three spare S-type chambers to replace any worn ones on the other two horns. The end result should be a new RST horn on one of the C-Class, probably C509, and two really well-functioning S5Ts on C510 and C506.